Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming to our third Spotlight session. Uh, we're on a roll here. Um, today we have a presentation by um, Scott Kodai, who is an instructor in the um, Department of Management, teaches business administration, something he might know a little something about, as he's also the director of, or sorry, the manager of, of distributed learning technologies in academic technologies. So um, we're also in, this is his house, we're in his distance learning. <laughs> classroom so um, and he is going to be presenting on uh, Blackboard Learn's Grade Center which he used last semester as a pilot faculty uh, using Blackboard Learn before the rest of the campus had a chance to um, experience the fun that is a finally improved grade book from what we've had in years past so at least I hope that's what you felt yes. about it but I guess we'll find <laughs> out uh, so here's Absolutely. Scott. I, one of the reasons I wanted to do the spotlight um, is because I think the grade book is my favorite feature of Learn the most improved feature. Um, although I like a lot of the other stuff too. But um, so let me just show you a little bit. I think I have 15 minutes to show you what I want to show you and then some time for you to ask questions. So let's pop down to my full grade center. And the first thing you will notice is that it's very colorful. Um, the color coding, there, there are many options for color coding. So let's just take a quick look at what I did. So if you go up to manage grading color codes. So I enabled it with the checkbox. You can do um, have things color coded by whether they're in progress, needs grading, or you've exempted the grade. I don't really do a whole lot of that in my class, so I went for the grade ranges. So I color coded them so basically the, the letter grade scale, ballpark, was the different colors. So if a student's red, that means they failed that assignment. If a student's yellow, they got an A on that assignment. And the nice thing about that is that it lets you, at a glance, see what you know, a particular student might be, or, or a particular assignment, there's an assignment with lots of red in it, you know, maybe some people didn't turn that assignment in, so there's an easy way to tell how, how people are doing in the class. It's also very nice if you have a student in your office, you can just click next to their name, and I've, I've hidden the last names here to protect their an anonymity, but you can easily hide all the other rows. So now all I have is that student, so they can be sitting in my office, we can talk about their grades, we can scroll back and forth, and so for this particular student, you can see there's really no red until you get over here. So when they're saying, why is my grade bad? Well, it looks like it's the midterm, and um, there's some participation issues early in the semester. It's easy to take a quick shot of where a student's having struggles. When you've limited the, to just that one student, you can also use what's called smart views, which we'll talk about a little bit. But if I just wanted to look at this student's tests, I can use a smart view, and now the only two columns it shows me is the midterm and the final. If I want to look at the participation grades, again, now all I have is the participation grades. Makes it really, really easy to slice and dice the information in your gradebook in a way that lets you, that makes sense. Yes? It looks like you can't squeeze those columns if you wanted to. It doesn't seem like you can squeeze the columns, the widths of the columns. I think they're defined where they are. Um, although, I don't know. There may be a feature I haven't found yet. So let me pop back to the full grade center view and restore all the rows. So let me show you how to do the smart views that I was just talking about. So if you click manage and smart views, I've added a bunch to my course. Um, some of them come built in. Um, most of these down here were built in smart views. <coughs> the ones with the little green star are the ones that show up on the left hand side of the screen. These are your favorites. So for instance, if I just wanted to see just the tests, I could come here and click this, or since it's already over here, I just quickly can, can bounce to it. So you'll see that I set up smart views for the groups. I use groups in my class. I have nine groups. So I thought I'd set up the ninth uh, smart view for you real quick. And we'll just call it group nine. I'm not very imaginative. Um, here's the options for your smart views. You can do all kinds of different things. You can look at just certain users based on their performance. So I just want to see all the students who got less than a 50% on the midterm, or all the students who did not turn in an assignment, or all the students who got an A on an assignment because I'm going to exempt them from another assignment, or however you want to filter it. Um, you can have it just be individual users. You can view items by their category, so only assessments, only, uh, only um, quizzes, whatever category you named it, only um, assignments. You could do some custom fancy stuff. 
Um, I just picked a course group and I just want to see group nine. It automatically lists out your groups and I click submit. And so now when I click on group nine, those are the students that were in group nine. It's that easy just to filter that group. And then what I did is I added a column to the gradebook called group and I set this column up. I just named it group. I set it to just be text because I'm not going to do any calculations on it. Um, and I said, don't include it in Grade Center calculations. Um, I, I didn't I didn't display this column to students, but I'm thinking I, I might next time. So they, I didn't want to confuse them by thinking that they had some point value when they're in group four, so they got four points or something. So I didn't display it to them, but you could. Um, I don't think you really want to show them the average group number. That's not going to help. Um, that was a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> Um, so now I want to enter their group number here, and this is how easy it is to enter a grade in in Learn. You'll be you'll be impressed if you've entered grades in Vista. You just click there, and we're in group nine, so I just hit nine and I hit enter, and I just go right down the list. It's that easy to enter grades. Um, it's quick and easy. I used to always in Vista export to Excel so I can enter the, all the midterm grades and then upload it back again. I never did that and learn because it was just easier to just sit there and go down the list. Put in the grade, hit enter, put in the grade, hit enter. It was quick and easy. So now I have a column. I go back to the full grade center that shows what group the students are in, which is really nice because when you get an email from a student that says, hey, my group turned in this assignment. Why did I get this grade? I always have to go look at, well, what group are you in? <laughs> they, didn't, they don't mention what group they're in. They assume that I know all the groups and have them all memorized. So I'm sure you all do. But um, I have to look it up. So this I added this column so that I could easily say, oh, you're in group eight. So that's a really handy column, which means that the downside is that when you scroll, that column disappears. And that's not so helpful. So if you go to column organization, this is one of my favorite screens because this gray bar up here everything above this bar is a frozen column. So all I have to do is grab that group column and drag it up there right above that bar and let go and then hit submit. And now this group column is frozen. So now I can keep that column visible. And uh, like you said, I wish I could narrow it because it really doesn't need to be that wide. But I can scroll across and, and still know what group they're in. You could do the same thing with any of those columns column organization. One that I often like to do as I was exploring is I would throw their letter grade column up there in the top so that it always stayed there so that as I'm looking at everything else I can keep track of where their, their grade in the class is. Um, speaking of letter grade columns, one of my favorite features, let me pull this down off the frozen section, one of my favorite features is the, um, the way grades are calculated. So in Vista I had this complicated series of calculated columns and points possible and points earned for assignments, for assessments, for participation. And then every time I added a grade, I had to update the points possible or it skewed the everything. And it was complicated, but it worked so that even after the first assignment, the students knew what their letter grade was in the class if, if the world ended today and I had to post grades. So it kept them up to date all semester long, but it was tedious and prone to error. If I added a quiz and I forgot to update the points possible, suddenly it was like everybody got bonus points. And then I'd adjust it later, and everybody would send me an email. Why did my grade go down? Um, so it was confusing. Mm -hmm. With Learn, it just does it for you. Yeah. It's so cool, because you, as long as a, uh, an assignment is tracked as being um, included in Grade Center calculations, as soon as you enter a grade there, it calculates. The, the calculated column figures out. Um, it knows that assignment was worth 10. You put 10 points in, so it knows it's 100%. It just adds them all up. So, and I'll refer you to the actual gradebook training to figure out the different ways. There's the regular total column, there's the weighted total column, there's the average column. So there's different ways you can calculate those. But the important thing is once you set that up, all you have to do is enter the grades. So if you're grading, um, so one of the examples I always had a hard time with is I'm grading writing assignments. They take time. So I always like graded them all, entered all the grades into Excel and Vista so that I could quickly upload them and change the points possible so that it didn't mess anything up because otherwise if you grade one and then you enter the grade now that person's got bonus points mm -hmm. until you update the possible and then you get emails and <laughs> so I always had to do this other process now you upgrade that first student their grade gets updated correctly everybody else grade stays the same and you could just one at a time as you enter the grades it calculates the final so the other nice thing is uh, 
a student misses an assessment or an assignment. They don't turn it in, they have a good excuse, their dog ate their computer, whatever. Um, until you enter a zero, it just doesn't count it in their grade. So you can always say, go ahead and turn it in late. If you have an excused thing, when they turn it in late, they get a grade, it can be the full grade, no problem. Or you can at that point apply a you know 50% late for turning it in late, 50% uh, off for turning it in late, however you wanna adjust for it. But there's no special convoluted, I have to re-release the quiz to you you just leave the quiz open. Somebody can take it late. It shows up in here as needs grading. And when you go look at it, it'll say it needs grading because it was late. And then you just say, oh, well, that's a zero. You know, it's easy to override that. So it doesn't, it doesn't ever close that door off to have you have an extra special quiz for that one student who's... Even if you have an ending date for the actual quiz? If you have a due date. Now, if you okay. set up... So this moves more into assessments. Yeah. And what I did at the beginning of the semester is I put um, the due date doesn't make it disappear. Okay. It stays open. You can continue you, whenever you want. You can take that quiz. But if you take it before the due date, Learn grades it and puts it in the grade book. If you take it after the due date, Learn grades it and puts it in a needs grading status. So you know something's up with that. And you can go in and go, why is this need? Oh, it's there because they turned it in late. And then it's up to you. You know, if, if it was one minute late, maybe you want to be a nice person and, and uh, and give them the points anyway. If it was three days late and they didn't talk to you, you can put it in a zero. You know, if they had an excuse, whatever, you can work it out. It puts the power back in your hands instead of the system forcing you into some guideline. Now, if you use the thing that says display until that date, that due date, which is what I started doing, it disappears when that due date passes. And then nobody can take it. And then you have to remake it visible for it to be re-enabled. The students can't go back and use it for studying, and so I, I, was, yeah. I stopped doing that. I was just thinking of the example. Sometimes we have <coughs> students from disabled student services who need extended time, or you would take it afterwards. Exactly. So I think that this would allow for that, based on what you're it, saying. It kind of does, although, you know, the, the timer bar, if you do the forced completion, that will, you can't get them extra time. That'll be, that'll be that much time. Um, you don't have to do forced completion. Right. You could just say, well, you have 10 minutes. And they'll get a timer bar that'll track 10 minutes. And then it'll keep. It'll just let them keep going. You can turn right. it in late. And so it's yeah. a little bit maybe difficult for that student who gets extra time to understand that the timer bar doesn't apply to them, but to right. also keep track of their time. Right. Um, I can tell you um, on the roadmap for Blackboard is this ability to apply different settings to an assessment per person which will be the, really the silver bullet for that whole Right, but this um, is, you know, coming key. back to your grade book, it's pretty slick that the key thing you said there is if you don't put the zero in. Yes, if you don't put the zero in, it's like it never happened. It's also very easy if somebody, you know, really bombed the midterm because they had uh, some sort of, and you know, crisis. crisis situation. You actually have the ability to just exempt the grade. It just means that it doesn't count against them. It doesn't count for them. It's just gone. I don't know if I do that for a midterm necessarily, but for a, a smaller assignment or a discussion posting, very easy to just exempt a grade. Um, let's see, I don't know how we're doing on time. We're probably going over 15 minutes. Um, I wanted to show you the class survey thing I did. When you take a survey, there's no points attached to it. I, I said that it was 20 points possible. But it won't, when they submit the survey, it won't give them 20 points because it can't, there's no right answer. So it doesn't know how to give them points. You just get the green check mark. So I did have to, since I gave them 20 points for it, I did have to come in and just quickly give them the 20 points. You notice how easy it was to see which ones needed it because they were red. Mm -hmm. And then they changed to yellow as soon as I did it. This person um, says attempt in progress. So I click this and I pop down to their attempt and... Um, nor their last name. Um, you'll notice that they submitted it on the 17th. And it was actually due on the 15th. So it didn't, even though they had submitted it, it was not in time for the due date. Mm -hmm. So that's why it didn't give them the check mark. It gave them the in progress. And then I get to choose whether I'm going to give them the points or not. Let's see. Um, oh, the, the history, which I don't know. Let's see if I can. I don't know if I have any good ones. If I go look at view grade details. So here's the assignment. It's saying that the original grade's been overridden. 
and I can easily see down here that the completed value was zero. That's, you know, it was a survey, they didn't get any points. And I overrode it with this. So here's my full grade history. I can see that they, they completed it. I overrode the grade. I can look at the, um, the actual details about the column. I can come in here and manually override the grade and give them a different grade. I can enter comments here that go back to the student. So um, even though this was late, I gave you full credit because of what we had talked about, whatever that you want to tell them. Or I can make a note down here that's only for me. That's like I gave them full credit because they had the medical excuse. Mm -hmm. Or I gave them full credit even though um, I didn't like him. Or whatever you want to say that you don't want it to go out to the students. <laughs> so um, it's really nice that you can, and then it'll just keep track of all the changes you make so that you can always come back and, and, and adjust. So a lot of times you'll you know, put a zero in for an assignment that didn't get turned in in time. Done deal. The student comes to you two days later. They just got back from their grandmother's funeral. You know, they, they tell a convincing story and you feel sorry for them. And so you say, okay, I'll go back and give you, you know, let you redo it. And then you can, you can see what the, the great history was. So it's very nice. Do you have any questions or comments? Yes. Submitting feedback to users without grading. Have you done that at all? I haven't like done that. Like if they had just done a draft or something and then... You know, I haven't played with that. There is that option um, in an assignment to allow them multiple submissions. And I, I believe that it works that way where they can submit one, you can put some comments, and then when you save it, it goes back to them. It's still officially submitted, but they can go in and submit again. And it tracks every one of their submissions. I know that it does that so that you can see the different versions. Um, that's the other thing that I did use that I didn't talk about is the needs grading view, which is throwing an error right now, of course, because it's a demo. Um, the needs grading view will show you any assignments that you currently have that need graded assignments, um, assessments if they either need manual grading, like there were paragraph answers in your quiz, or you know fill in the blanks that you have to actually double check. Um, or a, a, an assessment that was actually submitted after the due date will show up in the needs grading and it's very easy to just go from assignment to assignment and you can just grade it, hit next, grade it, hit next. It's a little green box um, with a white exclamation point. A little green box with a white exclamation. It's very easy to see. You can see it in the grade center itself or you can see it right here in the needs grading. It brings them all together. So you can actually go through and then when you're out of them, you're done. Like all your grading's done. It's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> The rubrics are very nice as well. So when you're doing the grading, you can actually have the rubric can pull up right there handy and you can just check the boxes, click submit. Makes it quick and easy to do the grading and, and more consistent, especially if you have a grader or a TA that's doing it. Yeah. I think unlike our previous grading system, you don't have to, you did not have to add the formula for it because it automatically did or did you have to add the formula? No, I actually didn't add any formulas at the beginning of the semester. It comes with the total column. Yeah. So the way I do it, which I think is the way most faculty do it um, because it's easier math wise, mm -hmm. is you just have total points in the class. So if I want my assignments to be 25% of the grade, I just make sure that the assignments total about 250 points out of the thousand points in the class and that way they become 25% of the grade. It's kind of the most intuitive way to do it. So I just use the final total column and whatever percent of that is what you get. And that's all built in. That just is set up when you log in. You start creating assignments. As long as you check that box that says include in grade center calculations, they all get accumulated. And that final, the final letter grade column, you do have to once go into schemas and you can adjust your, your actual points. So 93 and above is an A, 90 to 93 is an A minus. You do have to fill this in one time so that it knows what your schema is for your class. And then after that it just calculates it. And all you have to do is um, when I went into the let me scroll back across this actual letter grade column. Um, I believe it created this column for me but what I did do is change it to display the letter grade as its primary display, which is what the students will see, and then their score as the secondary display. Although it's pretty easy also to make it a percentage. And when you do that, now you see the letter grade and their percentage. So it's either way, you can flip it back and forth at will. 
So um, they not only get the total points, but they get to see their grade to see. They get to see the actual that, letter grade. Does that get column get upgraded? Is there, is the points are being yes. accumulated? Yep. That's great. Yeah. So as you fill in for all your other columns, the total points gets adjusted, the letter grade gets adjusted just automatically. You can actually do what if things with students in your office where they're like. Well, what do I need to get on the final to get a B minus? I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever had that question. <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually just say, oh, let's see. You can pull up, you know, limit the gradebook to just them, pull up the final column and their letter grade column and type in a grade and say, oh, I didn't make it. Type in a grade, type in a grade until they get to where they want. You know, you don't have to do the math. You let the system do all the math for you. So it's quick and easy to, to give them an idea of what they need to get. And then you just blank it out when they're done until they actually take the final. <laughs> So yeah, it's very powerful. This letter grade thing was just automatic. Now I did at the end of the semester, I added some columns, which I'll put under totals here, because I wanted to drop the um, the lowest quiz, and so I wanted to make sure that the the quiz totals got dropped. Now this was a uh, I, I I did the math here. I'm not really sure how this worked. I've dug into it. I added these total columns and thought I'd have to go back to the total points column and make sure it was only adding up the subtotals, but it just all worked. As soon as I added the totals column, everything was right. So I'm not really sure how that worked exactly. Um, <laughs> it was magic. But to do this um, so column. Can I ask you about that? Oh, sure. So you manually calculated the quiz total? I just created a column and said, yeah, add up everything. Well, in fact, so this is the column. So it's I called it quiz total. And I came in here and I selected um, the quiz category. So everything, I made sure all my quizzes were in the quiz category. So I came down to this box and chose quiz and moved it over. And then up here, I just said drop the lowest one grade. And you could do zero, two. I like, I like how you can drop the highest grades. Students will probably love that. <laughs> the highest, highest three grades are dropped. <laughs> um, and then you make sure you leave it calculated as a running total, which is the default. And it just worked. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know why, but I did the math and it and it, it actually came out okay. If you add up the quiz total, assignment total, exam total, participation total, it added to the total points, which was the right thing. So I think though, in the in the you can just do that all in this final column. You can just include all the categories and then mm -hmm. drop the information in here and have one column that does all the dropping. But then the students don't necessarily trust that, like until they do the math. But if I can show them, okay, you had 15 quizzes, here's your quiz total, they can add them up and make sure that the lowest one got dropped without having to add up all of them and make sure that yeah. they got dropped. So if you drop a participation and a quiz, it, it kind of gives them a little cleaner, easier look. Any more questions? They want to ask me why the group column is not color coded? Because that threw me for a while. I'm like, why? I expected them to all be color coded, but I figured they'd all be yellow because it's over 100%, right? Because the points possible is zero. Mm -hmm. Is and there no points associated with it? It's zero points, yeah. So I thought maybe that's it. I think what it is is that it's um, also a quick column information. It is a text column. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have a percentage that can apply. Okay. Uh, one is no particular percentage of the alphabet. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was it threw me that that one stayed white. And when I did the color coding, I started with just red, just to show me the trouble spots, mm -hmm. and it looked so awkward that everything else was white that I just kept filling them all in. I'm looking for a nice gradient that really will, but I'm not an artist. But, but I kind of went red to yellow with you know shades of orange being, you know, the darker brown I think is is worse, and then the the lighter brown is a little better, and by the time it gets to yellow, you're getting an A. So, any other questions? Yeah? If I have a couple of assignments that's actually group work, and then I want uh, the total grade to be weighed by the peer evaluation, can you do that calculation? Um, I don't know if you can do that calculation the way you're talking about. Yeah, let's say a group paper and a group presentation, the, but... Uh, all of... My individual's group score needs to be weighed by their peer evaluation. Yeah, so my um, the group my assignments were mostly group assignments. So I think the way I would do that is I would just go pick that group and 
we'll scroll across to an assignment. Those are all quizzes, but um, so a web assignment. Pick pick an assignment here. So here's a marketing survey assignment. This is a group assignment. They're all the same. You could easily just then override those grades on a case by case basis. So if you you know if the assessment was everybody participated except for you know Allison, you could give her a zero or give her fifty percent or whatever. So you could weight it manually. And yeah. I'm pretty sure you could create a a a third column, a weighted right. column that said give eighty percent weight to the group grade and give twenty percent weight or whatever to the individual peer evaluation grade and then you use that third column as your composite grade for okay. the assignment. It can and be then done. just yes. make sure that the other two columns are not included in grade center calculations. Right. So okay. it doesn't get right. picked up yeah, on the total. Just the calculated column. Just the calculated column. So it's yeah, called a calculated well, column, but you can't punch in a formula in the way you could with Vista, but you can easily do a weighting like that. So, so it's there better. you go. Right. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do that this semester. I am thinking of trying to do a peer evaluation component. Um, but I didn't actually. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever had groups where nobody came to me and said, "God, we got this one group member that's just really dogging us." Everybody said, "Oh no, we're all participating and going well." Which I do. You think the color had an influence? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they get to see the color. Oh, Unfortunately, the oh, students wow. don't see the color. Um, which is a little sad because yeah. you know I think a little red grade might help yeah, highlight kind of something. Kind an emotional too. impact. Yeah. Have so you I tried don't... going in with your demo student to see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the demo student doesn't really see yeah. that. Um, well, I can show you real quick if I can remember my demo student password. <laughs> hey, first try. You guys all know about the demo student? So there's what, the, there's what the student sees. So there's no color coding involved here. Mm -hmm. They can see what I, I did, my strategy for the demo student was I always gave the demo student the average grade in the class for every assignment so that the calculation um, should be the average grade across the whole class. And if I pulled this up in class to show them how it looked, they would have an idea of what the average grade was. So I had all the different quizzes. What I really wish there was a way to have dividers in here that made it because it's a little bit overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, mind blowing it and this is an example of um, a, a, note. a note that I, I returned a feedback and they can also view the rubric so of course this is my demo student I didn't fill out the rubric for the demo student I just assigned them a grade but um, they would normally see that they would be highlighted the one that applied to their assignment so yeah, they get to see the rubrics. They get to, um, I don't know what that link takes you to. Yeah, a little bit more information. But yeah, so they always had, I always left them all up. They could see everything and count it all up and make sure I told, always told them, you know, double check my math, make sure I'm, I'm not cheating you out or anything, add up all the points. And they all did, because I got questions. This might not necessarily be a grade book question, but in uh, this came up in the collaboration workshop with discussions when you create a grade discussion board. It only allows you to do a point value column mm -hmm. in the form that you fill out. Is there a way to change that in the grade book so it's just text so that if they just want to give a plus or minus that they did the post? That somehow just put a check instead of a point value? I don't know. I haven't worked with grading discussions. Oh. Um, I mean, you could always just give them a zero or a one right. um, grade. You know, zero if they didn't, one if they did. Right. They but it wouldn't be automatic. The text column in the grade right. book, but then the whole grading feature of discussions is very nice. It's, it's kind of useless if you have to do a manual. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I could think is to make it a zero or a one. Kind of setting, mm -hmm. I, I but I haven't looked at it. It, it seems to me like there's a lot more features in Learn than there were in Vista, and a lot of little nooks and crannies that, like, I taught with it for a whole semester, and I still feel like I just scraped the surface. And I already have a list in my head of different things I'm going to try this time, yeah. and so, so yeah, kind of excited. There's a lot of features on the roadmap too that will come out, will make things better, but be more things to learn. <laughs> so. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much, Scott. That was really helpful and clearly gone much deeper on the Grade Center than um, most people have started to yet.